Hi everyone, and welcome to Daisy Stalls. Today I'm doing another homage like tag update, and this one is number 13. It's been a while since last time, and the reason for that is just that I haven't made enough tag until now to actually make a video. So I hope you enjoy this one. The first item is this fly sheet and halter set. This horse actually has a video and this halter also has a tutorial video. So if you want to check those out, they will be in the corner right here if you want to watch them later. I also want to make it clear that I have washed my hands very thoroughly, but still they are a little bit stained because I was handling leather dye without gloves like an idiot. Anyways, let's have a look at the set. So this halter is kind of my new halter design and I really like it. And I added a fly veil to this one, which I think adds a lot of kind of personality and detail and I really like that. Here's the buckle and as you can see, I've added these little metal eyelets and I love how it looks. I added it to the other side as well, obviously, and as well as the one under the chin. I tried to add a lot more detail than I've done before to my halters. So for example, this little piece of ribbon here holding the chin and nose strap together. Also this little metal tag, I love adding those. And yeah, I really like it. Anyways, let's have a look at the fly sheet. So I made it out of a light pink mesh, but it actually looks white, which was what I was hoping for. And when I posted this on Instagram, a lot of you guys seemed to like it, which I'm happy you did. Anyways, it attaches with these two closures on the side here and they are slightly adjustable. Then it has this belly panel and it attaches with two more strips on the side here. It has a tail flap that I took the time to sew on and I think that really paid off because glue would quickly look really globby and gross with this fabric. It has a single closure up in front and it has the same buckle like on the halter and I also added a couple logos because it just adds to the realism and looks kind of cool. So that was the fly protection set, I guess. I don't know what you would call it, but yeah. You might recognize this next set as I posted a lot about it. And this is the red endurance set. I made this for a hobby pal for a trade we're doing, so it won't be staying with me for long. So the head stall is a combination bridle, so a halter bridle combination. And it's actually a hackamore as well, which I think is kind of cool. For the actual buckles, I usually use 0.4mm wire, but for this one, I use 0.3mm wire for everything except the shanks on the hackamore. And I think it turned out really nice and really delicate. The reins attach with a little clip to the shanks, and they're just regular rope reins. It also has a padded leather breastplate, which adjusts with a small buckle under here and attaches to the girth with a clip, as well as attaching to the saddle's small D-rings by the pommel. And here is the saddle. It looks pretty funky, it's definitely very different. It has these kind of fancy stitch markings on the seat here, and it's two-toned black and red, which I've never done before. It's supposed to resemble this Zaldi endurance saddle, and I think I got pretty close. I think it's a really unique kind of saddle, and I really, really enjoyed making it, and it wasn't too, too hard either. I actually do have a walkthrough of how I kind of made this set, so if you want to watch that, link in the corner and in the description. And I have to say, I am kind of proud of these stirrups. They're my first time making these kind of unique type of stirrups, and I think I really did succeed, even though I used strange methods. The set also features a small saddlebag up front, which is just for looks it can't open, unfortunately. And also on the back, which has a little pocket, which I have put a carrot in on this side. It has a little bedroll on the back, and on the other side, there is a little water bottle holder, and in the pocket, I've actually made a little granola bar. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the endurance set. It looks pretty iconic, and it's a little bit bittersweet that I'm going to have to send it off, but I'm excited for my trading pal to receive it. 
Next up is this cute little peach halter. This is actually also for the trade. I actually used the same ribbon that I used for the blue halter, although I glued this one in half so it's half the width and I actually really like how it looks. It looks a little bit more delicate and a bit more to scale. Getting in the buckle holes and the buckles in general is a bit more challenging this way, but you gotta sacrifice something for the looks. <laughs> and of course, I added the lovely little tag. And the nose band on this one is a bit more unique. It's padded and then it has these D-rings on top. Other than that, it's just a basic halter and I do quite like it, so maybe I'll make one for myself. And we have another halter. This one I made in the tutorial video, and it actually stands as one of my favorites. I actually painted the ribbon on this one, which adds some extra flair, but the colors are so classic, which just makes me love it so much more. Compared to the blue halter, they're quite similar, although the buckle on this one is a little bit different, and also this one has a little logo, as you can see. One thing that a commenter pointed out on the tutorial video is that I didn't match up the stripes on the noseband hair and it will forever bug me. <laughs> well, I was being serious when I said I really like the red endurance set, so I made myself a green one. This is in fact a pretty big sneak peek into a bigger project I'm working on and it will have a video which I'm super excited about. It's just taking a while because I'm having some troubles. <laughs> Anyways, let's have a look at the set. For this one's head stall, I just made a basic halter underneath and then a very basic bridle over top. I love the hackamore so much for the previous one, so I made it for this one as well. It has a green breastplate made of ribbon and it has a martingale as well. And it also attaches to the girth with a small clip. As well as attaching at two points here by the pommel. Just for fun, I added this little safety clip as well. It's supposed to prevent the reins from slipping over your horse's head. So since this is the second edition of this endurance saddle kind of, I think I did a lot better on this one. And especially with the little seat pattern, I think it looks a lot neater. The stripes look pretty much the same, although I made these all black and also used a different material for the actual cage. I'm actually very proud of this saddle. I discovered a new technique for the panels to make them fit the horse better and I think that improved the whole shape a lot, so I'm very very happy about that. The saddle pad is quite simple, it's just green and black with some fuzzy lining. Then we have these little water and my cat is... Anyways, where was I? Oh uh, yeah, the water bottle holders. I made these bottles out of Fimo clay and I painted the Daisy Stall's initials on them just because. And they are actually removable as well. On the back, I just added a simple bedroll, which I honestly don't really like. I think the color isn't really working and it's a bit stiff, so I might switch that out. I also added this little hanging sponge, which I've seen a lot on endurance tag sets. And she also has a green crupper, and I think this is actually my first time making one. It's padded with black fleece around the dock, and has a small clip for easy and quick removal. And yeah, that was basically my green endurance set. Now, this is not actually the horse it belongs to. I'll show you the one that it's actually made for. If you've been active on my page, you might have seen her on my community tab or maybe over on Instagram. Anyways, this is my custom jumping girl or rather landing girl. Now, so far she's been causing a lot of trouble, but I won't go into too much detail because I'm saving that for her video. Anyways, I am optimistic that she will turn out good eventually and I'm very excited for her whole project, which, you know, I'm not going to spoil too much. So yeah, let's move on. Next up is this bridle I made for my boy Pigeon, and I don't think I've introduced you guys to him. He caused a lot of trouble as well, so he doesn't have a video, but I'm very happy with his custom job and also his paint job, even though that was the most challenging thing. Oh yeah, and when I painted this knee splotch, it kind of started to look like a bird, 
So I just rolled with it and called him Pigeon. Peace. Anyways, the bridle is supposed to look like an Australian Barco bridle, which I really like the design of. It's quite tough and thick and harder to break, which is great. I also wanted to add something different, so I added a fly veil, which I haven't seen done on a Barco bridle before, but I thought it looked very cool, so I added it anyways. I was having a bit of trouble with my leather while making this bridle, so I don't think it looks the best, but it will be part of a set, so I think its entirety will look great. Now, this next item is definitely not a piece of tack, but I really wanted to include it on my channel somehow, so this is my custom Mononoke doll. If you're not familiar, Princess Mononoke is a movie by Studio Ghibli, and this is the main character San, or then Princess Mononoke. The doll scale is a little bit bigger than Schleich, unfortunately, and if she were to be in Schleich scale, she would be around 2 meters tall, which is very tall. <laughs> But these dolls are great regardless, and if you want to know where I bought them, I'll put a link down below in the description box. Alright, let's have a closer look. So I actually repainted her face, which was super hard because it's so tiny, and her hair is actually a wig, which you can remove, but I'm not gonna do that right now. She has some earrings, and I painted her name, San, in Japanese on them, just because I can. <laughs> She has her little string with wolf teeth and beads, and then of course her iconic wolf cape. Her clothes are kind of sewn onto her because I don't plan to take them off and I wanted them to be form-fitting. And I really muddied them and made them look very ratchet because she is a battle princess. She has a battle wound on her arm here, along with her knife. In the other hand, she's holding a spear, I think it's called. And then on that hand, she also has a couple of bracelets, which I'm actually pretty proud of. I braided them with sewing thread. Her shoes, or I guess socks, are pretty awkward looking, but they look that way in the movie, so... <laughs> and then perhaps the most iconic piece of all is her warrior mask. Now, honestly, I'm just really happy with this doll overall. It was such a different project, and I think I really succeeded, so yeah, I'm super happy about it. And I know this is not tack, but real quick, I did make her a wolf companion as well, and this is a huge wolf model that I repainted and slightly resculpted the face. The original one looked way too happy and friendly, so I had to put a little snarl on that face. And I believe that was everything for this time. Thank you all so much for watching the video all the way to here. I really hope you have enjoyed it and enjoyed looking at the tag I made recently. Now I have so many ideas for videos and projects and I'm slowly getting to all of them, but it takes time and I have to prioritize my life as well. So I hope you guys understand that, but know that pretty much all the time I'm at least thinking about it. I really hope you do look forward to these videos like I do. And if you don't want to miss them, please hit subscribe and also like this video while you're at it and maybe comment down below what tag you liked in this video. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!